Welcome everybody to the Tag You're It podcast. I am Ray Ray. I am Dave. And uh, welcome to another Monday. We're nice and early. We're doing two shows today for the podcast. And uh, these were sort of uh, spur of the moment things that uh, we cooked up, or at least Dave cooked up. Um, But before we get there, I just wanted to show you guys my shirt here. And uh, this was made by a guy named Jeff Bates. We had that. I talked about the Generation of Kings um, discussion that we had, and now we have gotten in together, um, being friends, being uh, you know um, that brotherly love going around. And so, uh, my pastor at Redeemer, Greg Gomer, had this idea for a shirt saying, um, you know, let the gospel be the only thing basically that offends. And so we, um, they got together, and Jeff Bates made this awesome shirt: let the gospel be the offense. And so I just want to say thank you to him and just uh, to, if you guys are here in Springfield, uh, get on Facebook, look up Generations of Kings and uh, get a hold of that conversation. It's awesome. It's going to happen again um, where we talk about what's going on uh, between, um, you know, racism and justice and all that kind of stuff and get off your keyboards, get out into the community preach the gospel, be the gospel is what all I can say. And, um, we've got a starting of something, so let's continue it. So, but today we've got another gospel issue that uh, we want to deal with. I know it's a little weird on the screen right now because, uh, you know, things are weird in live land, but anyway, we have, uh, two awesome dudes on our show. Um, we had learned about this, uh, new group of people called Southern Baptists for the abolition of abortion. And that's something that got Dave and I, uh, our ears perked up. We joined the uh, Facebook group anyway, and uh, we wanted to uh, bring on a couple of guys. So, Dave, take it away. Yeah. So, um, gentlemen, if you don't mind, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself. Just tell us a little bit about who you are, and then we'll jump into our interview questions. So, uh, Bill, uh, how about you go first? You're the you're the senior in this, so uh, I'll let you go first. All right. Thank you very much. Good to be with you guys. My name's Bill Askell. And I pastor the Bethel Baptist Church in Owasso, Oklahoma. I've pastored Bethel for 15 years. I've been in ministry in Louisiana and Oklahoma for uh, about 45 years. And uh, love what I'm doing. Thank the Lord for it. Thrilled to be a part of a group of guys who see uh, that the Holocaust of abortion, uh, I believe, is number one on God's list of concerns, and I think you can attribute a lot of what we're facing in our country today because we have not taken care of the most vulnerable among us. Amen. Yeah. Darren, go for it, brother. Yeah, so uh, so my name is uh, Darren Stead. I'm the pastor at Harmony Baptist Church in Frankfort, Indiana. I've been there for about a year and a half now um, and pastored uh, in Indiana for, for the last, I don't even know, what's 12 or 13 years now. Uh, been involved in uh, abolition ministry, trying to put an end to abortion for about four years now. And um, I'm tremendously blessed to be a part of this group and these guys that are uh, that are uh, just really coming along and, and getting involved in this battle. It's been a tremendous blessing. I also want to say, too, it's, it's been a long time since anybody called me a cool dude. So, man, I appreciate that intro. Thank you for that. <laughs> well, hey, you're a brother in Christ, man. So <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> we got to we got to stick together. We got to exhort each other, and um, you know this is this is what this group seems to be about is exhorting one you know one another. Well, whenever we think about um, you know being uh, children of God, uh, adopted children of God for one, and um, whenever we come together, we are to rebuke and exhort one another. And in the uh, sort in this debate on abortion, you know there is. Um, We've talked about this on the show before. So we've had Jeff Durbin on with End Abortion Now. Uh, okay. We've had uh, Kavan Myers of, Bo- of Abolish Abortion Missouri on here. Um, we've talked about HB um, 
ASB 2285 um, with uh, Wes Scroggins. It's a, um, uh, a a bill that was proposed by Mike Moon of Ash Grove um, on abolition here in Missouri. And then we've yeah. had another pastor on here that talked about the same kind of stuff. And so this has been a topic that we have res- that we have dealt with here on on the podcast. And so it's really awesome to see a group um, with the SBC attached to it. So you know we recognize that. Um, there is, you have the pro-choice, you have the pro-life and you have the abolitionist. So we've, we've, yeah. we've discussed the distinctions, um, and, and the SBC in general, um, they would say we're pro-life. They would be voting for things that are pro-life and we are in a, we are in distinction. We are pro-life, but we are abolitionists. And so there, we know the distinction that there is, and you would agree that there is a distinction of one is for incremental um, things to happen in government, and then one is for hey, this has gone too way too far. It should have never been there in the first place. We need to just abolish it, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Amen. Amen. Yeah, our tagline is immediately, without exception or compromise. Man, I love it. And your video was great. We did share the video on our Facebook page and uh, on our personal Facebook pages. I even shared it on my church's Facebook page. But with that said, let's just kind of jump into these questions that we've given you. And I I hope that they're clear enough for you. If you need any clarity, don't hesitate to ask us because we're glad to clarify. But this first uh, question that I think is a really important thing is, um, just tell us a little bit about uh, what Southern Baptist for abolishing abortion is, how it came to be, um, whose brainchild was it? Okay, well, it's the brainchild of several guys from several different states. I know that uh, Darren will tell you his role at the convention last year. We, a group of us in the Oklahoma Baptist Convention, uh, got together this last November. Uh, My background is that back in the 80s when I was in the Louisiana Baptist Convention, we were working with uh, legislators there and with a constitutional professor, constitutional law professor at LSU, in Baton Rouge, trying to come up with what we call clean, we call it, used to call it a clean bill, a no exceptions bill. So that's kind of the background for where I come from. And last year, a group of us got together at lunch during the convention in Oklahoma. I uh, wanted to strengthen a, a, a good resolution that was being put forth on abortion, ending abortion. And after, in the aftermath of that, uh, it was received so well uh, that we talked and we knew we needed to do something Oklahoma-wide but also SBC-wide. And then we began to connect with some people. I met Darren at the, uh, at the Abolition Now Conference in Oklahoma City, I think, in February. So that's my background. And Darren, share uh, a little bit on some of that, if you've got anything you can add to, again, yeah. uh, who you are and, and how you came to be. Yeah, so, well, my story, getting involved in abolition is kind of a long... I've been a Southern Baptist longer than I've been a Christian, um, and uh, so I think that's probably maybe the story for a lot of Southern Baptists. Uh, but I, when I first became a Christian, uh, I think I was 14 years old. The Lord called me into ministry. I was faithfully ministering the gospel and things like that. And uh, through a series of events with some guys here in Indiana, I really became uh, convicted about my apathy regarding the slaughter of the preborn. And so I uh, got involved in the battle to abolish abortion. And I thought when I first got involved, I thought, man, this is be easy. You know, we just need a few well stated arguments and we should have this thing buttoned up and all the Christians should be on our side and we should be able to just, you know, end this thing. And, uh, that unfortunately that hasn't been the case. Um, and so it's been four years now, uh, that I've been involved in trying to faithfully minister the gospel at abortion mills and pleading with our legislators here in Indiana to pass a bill of, uh, abolition. And, um, the, the Southern Baptist churches here in Indiana have been receptive to what we're trying to do, but we decided that we wanted to bring our message to the national convention. And so in 2019, we made a motion from the floor of the national convention, uh, asking for the ERLC to do a research study on helping state conventions, uh, think about this, this, uh, this avenue of ending abortion called abolitionism and, and immediately and totally abolishing abortion uh, because we saw that in Oklahoma and Texas, two states that are very predominantly Southern Baptists, 
that Southern Baptists had actually come out against legislation to abolish abortion. And uh, so we wanted to come to the national convention and make it a conversation. And so they, uh, the, the resolutions committee, uh, unfortunately ruled that motion out of order. Um, and so, uh, because, uh, because of some, uh, I didn't use the word request. So the motion was ruled out of the order because of the absence of the word request. And so, um, we, it was a discouraging 2019, uh, convention for that. And then because of some other things that, that happened, still love the Southern Baptist convention. We went to Applebee's afterwards and we were, me and a guy named John Smith, uh, who's also an SBC pastor and an abolitionist and a brother who's involved in this, just an awesome, faithful brother. He was praying over our food and he was praying that God would raise up workers for the harvest. Hmm. And, uh, in the meantime, that was God was already doing that in Oklahoma as he was bringing together Pastor Dusty and Pastor Bill, and they were already working on their resolution there in Oklahoma. And so it's it's just interesting how God sort of brought this whole thing together uh, through just a, a series of little things. Um, and pastors who didn't even know each other apart from this movement. Most of us met for the first time, like Brother Bill said, in Oklahoma for the Abolition Now Conference. And uh, it was a tremendous blessing and joy to meet those guys and to be able to get to work on this project that we're now doing together that has multiple churches in multiple states from all over the United States of America, just trying to encourage the Southern Baptist Convention to get involved in this battle to abolish abortion. That's wonderful, and so I'm I'm, I'm hoping this uh, brings a lot of gets a lot of success and stuff. And so um, you guys have a, a website, right, that you can go on to and look at the statement, right? We do, uh, <laughs> Bill. Do you know that website, brother? I'm uh, just blanked. S B A S B A A. I should know that, shouldn't I? <laughs> I should. Yeah. We, do have, we have a Facebook presence, I know that. Yeah. Uh, Give me a second and I'll, and I'll grab yeah, it we'll, for you. We'll grab um, all that kind of stuff. I think you got the two worst guys of the group <laughs> on the online stuff. I just, I just now figured out Google Hangouts. So <laughs> yeah, right, that's, right. That's, that's awesome enough. But yeah, they're, but they're, they're 67 years old, so you got to bear with me here. Yeah, so, but there is a statement um, that everybody can, you know, it's accessible to anybody um, that can yes. get online, um, use Facebook, whatever. It's out there. Um, you can read it and then you can sign it if you agree sign with it, it yeah. and then give support and then be able to get into the community um, and the discussions and all that kind of stuff um, surrounding this because uh, really, um, like you, I think what you said there was, you know, you were thinking if we can just have the right arguments and all that kind of stuff and, and you, um, end up trying to make those right arguments and then it falls flat. Um, so it's actually going to come more through that, uh, just that the preaching of the gospel, um, to where it, it's like that little piece of yeast, right. That leavens the whole lump. And so we need to uh, end up leavening the whole lump. Um, and so yeah. a statement like this is a good, good piece of yeast for that. And we need to just get people talking about it. So it's not necessarily about having right arguments. It's about teaching people. It's about discipling people. Um, you know, talking about the gospel. And so I think you guys have got a really good start and, uh, you know, tag your it's here to help in any way and uh, get the news out in SBC land anyway, because there's a lot of stuff going on, but this is let's move the SBC because if we can move the SBC, right. Um, that's a major force behind. So, this. yeah, I want to jump into it's a little bit off script, but very similar to the questions that we've asked. Um, a lot of people aren't un, are, are unfamiliar anyways with the process of what a resolution is. Uh, what does it mean to bring a resolution to the annual meeting? Uh, Bill, you probably uh, are very well articulate yeah. in uh, what a resolution is, why Southern Baptists do them and and what a resolution should accomplish. All right. It's, a resolution is a we call it a snapshot. It's a snapshot of where the messengers who gather for an annual SBC meeting uh, planted themselves. It's a position, if you want to call it an annual meeting position paper that was taken. That's reflective. You hope when you have messengers gathering for the convention that they really are a reflection of the SBC as the whole. They're meeting on behalf of the whole. And they're not binding on any of our institutions or agencies, but the SBC is supposed to be led by what I call listening leaders. Our, our leaders are supposed to, to chart a course for us, but they need to be listening to the Baptist people. And there's a old adage that says, trust the Lord and tell the people. Mm -hmm. uh, and so a resolution gives sort of the temperature 
uh, the thermostat of here's where Baptists are. Uh, and, and really, Baptists, as you said, have been pro-life. I don't, to my knowledge, there's not ever been a resolution offered to be called a pro-life resolution or a resolution against abortion that was not embraced by the convention in its annual meeting. And so it does, after a fashion, begin to shape the thought process of our leaders. The difference is there's never been a resolution brought that's calling for total and immediate abolition. Mm. So we hope to begin to shape the culture. You said it earlier. Uh, it's about education, and it's about mobilization. So a resolution gives you sort of a stack a stack pole that you rally around and say, here's what we want to see done. And if the SBC continues to have clout, because certainly the Oklahoma Baptist Convention, just in terms of population in the state of Oklahoma, uh, ha- can weigh in on issues. If we weigh in as one mind, one voice, one man, the legislature will listen because if there are anything – uh, they're survivors. Amen. Mm-hmm. By the way, your website is southernbaptistabolishingabortion.com. So yes. we did put a link to that uh, just so everyone who is on the live stream can see that. I think that that is a key piece. Make sure you go there. And one thing that I really like is in the video that you created, you're basically reading the resolution. Am I correct? Is that the entirety of the resolution? So if you're a lazy guy like yes. me uh, who says, oh, I don't want to sit down and read a whole thing, I can I can watch the video and see a collective group of pastors reading that resolution. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Correct. And so um, here is kind of the next little piece that I think is is really important. You you spoke about this. Uh, Southern Baptists have multiple times passed resolutions saying that abortion is wrong, that we believe it is evil, uh, that we stand against it. What is the major difference between what's happened in the past and what you're doing now? Uh, okay, so I, I can take that one. A um, couple things uh, that, a couple things I would mention on that. Uh, number one, I think all the resolutions that the Southern Baptist Convention has passed that are anti-abortion resolutions were well-intentioned resolutions. The the people who brought those resolutions to the floor genuinely love the preborn and genuinely uh, had a desire to end abortion. And so I want to start by saying that. Um, but the distinction between what we're trying to do and all of the rest of those resolutions is that this resolution that we're bringing is really the only resolution that's actually consistent with the Baptist faith and message with the things that we say that we believe yeah. as Southern Baptists, you know, as Southern Baptists, we say that we believe that life begins at conception and that life should be defended from the moment of and conception is even a tricky word. Let's say fertilization. We believe that life begins at the moment of fertilization and should be protected from the moment of fertilization. Yeah. And so what our resolution seeks to do is it seeks to call upon the convention to behave consistently with that idea or to, to make a statement that is consistent with that idea. You know, last year we had a resolution. It was a pro-life resolution uh, that affirmed uh, a series of hard heartbeat bills in several different states. And there were a few other uh, pieces of legislation that were included. And I stand, I stood up in opposition of that, of that resolution. And the reason that I stood up in opposition of it is because it isn't consistent with what we say we believe as Baptists. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yes. You know, we, yeah, we, we don't say that we believe that life should be con- protected from the moment of a detected heartbeat. And the legislation, when you go and read it, it says, you can kill a baby if you can't hear its heartbeat. Well, we don't believe that. Yeah. We don't agree with that. We think yeah. that that's unjust. We think that's an iniquitous decree. Yeah. And so we have sought to bring a resolution that is more consistent with what we believe the scripture teaches and more consistent with what we say that we believe as Southern Baptists. Yeah. I mean, it's they, fact, oh, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, just add to that. It's, it's biblically consistent. And in terms of legalese, it's ethically consistent it all, yeah. our resolution speaks of equal protection under the law yeah. for every image bearer yeah and and you can't say that about any other uh, resolution in fact to date you cannot say that about any law that's been enacted in the name of pro-life legislation there is not equal protection under the law for every image bearer of god yeah and so our our resolution is is going back to the scriptures there and said it's it's embracing our own confession and it's recognizing I was taught by this law professor 
at LSU and Baton Rouge that if we have any hope of seeing something like Roe v. Wade ever taken down, that we have to come with legislation that recognizes every human being, born and unborn, deserves protection. Yeah. A bill that allows for exceptions is not is not equally protecting every human being under the law. Amen. And that kind of moves me to this next yeah. question. You know, um, it is pretty easy in my mind for people to confuse what it means to be pro-life with abolitionist. And I think that Satan has used that time and time again because the heartbeat bill sounds good on surface, you know, on face value. But then as you kind of jumped in there, so maybe you could describe, we've had people do it before, but man, it's okay to say things over and over again. We have different people kind of tune in at different times and uh, different folks pick up the podcast and maybe they haven't listened to all the episodes in the past. But, But what is the stark difference between someone who is... Uh, a abolitionist versus a pro-life person. Well, I, I was a, I was called myself years ago a principled pro-lifer. All right, mm-hmm. I've always been a no exceptions pro-lifer. Yeah. But what I discovered along the journey was that there are pragmatic pro-lifers. Yeah. Yep. They they look at something and say, "Well, that won't work. What you're what you're proposing." May be good, may be right, but it won't work. They're pragmatists. Yeah. And then, then we encountered professional pro-lifers. Somewhere along the way, uh, Darren mentioned good intentions a while ago. Somewhere along the way, people who I think initially had good intention discovered that there is a multi-million dollar industry out here of lobbying where you can lobby good, godly people tell them to support our cause and we'll keep going back to the legislature, back to the Congress to, to see abortion ended. But, but there's no intention of ending abortion because yeah. if you end abortion, you end their money stream. Yeah. And I mean, you guys, yeah, to, to interject in there real quick, cause you guys are from mm-hmm. Oklahoma and yeah. you have a recent, you know, exactly. you, you have a recent uh, example of that, you know, and um, like what was, what happened there? Cause you did have an uh, abolition bill in SB 13, right? And it right. was a it was a pro life person that squashed it, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was the vice president of Oklahomans, the president of Oklahomans for Life, who's the vice president of the National Right to Life. His name is Tony Lowinger, and he was one of our biggest detractors. He was going around the legislature telling these guys do not uh, do not buy into this. They were calling SB thirteen a, cessation, a secessionist bill that we were wanting to secede from the union. Mm. All sorts of lies and and misrepresentations were told that it would overturn every pro-life legislation ever adopted. Oklahoma, we'd be left bare naked without any way to stop abortion. This was coming from the Oklahomans for life. All right. So, so you had the professionals. And then we can, we had the political pro-lifers, the guys who get into office under the rubric of pro-life. Yeah. And our commitment is to demonstrate the fallacy of all that. And because the truth of the matter is pro-life now is just fall life, F A U X. It's it, it's pro abortion light. Yeah. 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 On the continuum. Abolitionism says no abortions, no how. Don't make emotional arguments. Don't don't try to sell us this notion that that if a child's conceived in rape or incest that we need to have an abortion because there's no other law in the land that murders the child for the sins of his or her father. And yeah. and so we it's a principled position. It says God hates abortion. God hates murder. And it sets us apart from any other legislation and is the only thing, if we ever get a bill adopted somewhere in the in the U.S. on the principle of abolition, Roe v. Wade will fall, yeah. ultimately. So, Bill and Darren, this is kind of where I, I think is, is such a key piece, and this is why we really wanted you to get on here. We want people to go to their state annual meetings and adopt this same policy across the board. And so uh, have you created some literature and what also can people do to begin to voice their support at the state level, even at the associational level uh, in the Southern Baptist life? Um, how do you see that going and what can be done so people can put, put feet on this? Yeah, so if you go to our website, which you mentioned earlier, southernbaptistabolishingabortion.com, 
Uh, you can click a couple things you can do. The first thing is you can read uh, and sign the resolution. Uh, we are asking all Southern Baptists who agree with us that abortion needs to be abolished to go to the website and sign the resolution. Because if there's anything that we know about the Southern Baptist Convention, it's that numbers are a big deal in the Southern yeah. Baptist Convention. And so we want to show up to the annual convention with lots and lots of signatures from Southern Baptists saying, I support this resolution. So we were asking them to read and sign it. And then we're also asking them to share it on their social media platforms so that they can help us get the word out about it. Yeah. In addition to that, on our website there, you also see that there are several things that we have written on there. So for example, there's a, a stand with us article on there. There's God's word is clear. There's another great article on there. Uh, you asked the question, what is an abolitionist? There's a section on there on what is an abolitionist that talks about the five tenets of abolitionism for people who are saying, well, I want to end abortion, but I don't know about the abolitionism thing. What does that even mean? Well, they can jump on the website there and, you know, um, I think Bill just did a great job explaining what abolitionism is in a nutshell but you know if a person wanted to take some time to really think about it you know they can jump on the website there and there's some literature right there there's some information right there for them to be able to take some time to read about what abolitionists are and uh and and, and just kind of learn more about what we're trying to accomplish and what we're hoping to do uh right there on the website yeah and even on the right. facebook i saw the other day like it's not even just the like those simple um, things answered, but it's even some more, you know, there's complicated, more complicated questions answered. You know, I saw a video, um, kind of, uh, I saw a post and I replied to it anyway, thinking somebody was actually asking a question, but it was a post in the form of a question giving a video. <laughs> and then I went, Oh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, but you know, just like, you know, about uh, ectopic pregnancies and stuff. So yeah, you guys we're, are, yeah. We're, we're, you mentioned association. You know, we're in the early stages of this. We're a year away from the Nashville 2021 convention. Yeah. This resolution would have been presented in Orlando had we had the oh. convention this year. Yeah. But so now we have an opportunity to get some traction, as Darren said. We want we want multiplied thousands of people. In yeah. a couple of days, 1,200 people signed uh, this resolution. We want to organize in such a way so that in every state convention, they can take this resolution, change the language in terms of not not speaking to the Southern Baptist Convention meeting in Nashville, but the Oklahoma Baptist Convention meeting, wherever we're going to be meeting on the dates we're meeting, and then every Baptist association. Ideally, if the Lord blesses our efforts and gives us the desires of our hearts, we will see this thing, the same resolution, passed in associations across the country, in yeah. state conventions across the country. By the time we get into Nashville next June, how would anybody at SBC leadership level look at a resolution adopted by the groundswell rank and file Southern Baptists and say, no, I don't think we're interested. Well, hey, one thing I would say is um, if you all are able to make some literature that we could hand out, um, Adam and I go in, uh, every year to the Missouri Baptist Convention uh, and the Missouri Baptist Annual Meeting. And, and, and the Green County, too. And so the Green County time, Annual so, Meeting. Yeah. We would love to be able to hand out stuff right there. Uh, in fact, if you don't have anyone who's already committed to basically grab that language and put it into a, a more Missouri Baptist context, just changing a few things, I'm ready to present this as a resolution. Uh, won't be the first time that I've written a resolution for the Missouri Baptist Annual Meeting, <laughs> but uh, you have two guys who are ready to go and uh, make this, uh, submit it to the resolution committee. So uh, how about other people who want to do that in their states? Do you have any way that you're keeping track of that? Because you've got the Kansas-Nebraska Convention of Southern Baptists. You've got the Arkansas Convention of Southern Baptists. Of course, uh, it seems like you've got Indiana and Oklahoma already taken care of. Um, what can people do if they say, hey, I'm listening to this in California, and I'm ready to take this to the California Baptist Convention, what can they do? They can reach out to us on our website. Uh, and and there's, I think there's a, a notation section that you're signing this where they can let us know of their interest to carry the ball for us in these various areas. Just yeah. like you guys have said, we appreciate that. And, you know, uh, you're hired. Uh, let's, let's, <laughs> let's build this kind of, kind of coalition nationwide yeah. Taking the same language, making it location specific, and just flood the SBC with this so that by the time Nashville comes around, uh, it will be a household item. 
Now, this yeah. might be a logistic question that you might not be 100% prepared to do, but let's say that there's someone who wants to um, make a donation to uh, purchase some literature so that they can hand it out at their convention. Do you have anything set up for that? Are you setting something up for that? Um, how could someone That's like that get involved? I think that's something that we're working on. We don't quite have it set up yet because we're working on pulling together literature right now. Um, but that is definitely something that we're working on. And I think the availability for that is a lot of all the guys who are working on this are pastors at this point. Well, not all of them, but the overwhelming majority. And so we're, we're trying to kind of pull this together around doing some of the other things that, that we do. Um, and so that is uh, what you just mentioned is on the list of things that we're talking about pulling together literature and materials that people can go. Um, but one of the things that, uh, one of the things that I've done just to kind of give you a, uh, um, you know, sort of a strategy for a person who wants to do something like that. They want to bring this to their local convention or their local uh, state convention, or they want to bring it to their local association. Uh, one of the things that I've done is I've uh, printed out the resolution itself and I've printed out the, what is an abolitionist, uh, statement. And then um, uh, this was before we were involved as involved with this as we are now. But another thing I would do is print out an article or two from the website. And I've actually brought those things to pastors to sit down across the desk from them or to uh, my associational leader would be another person and put that in their hands so that they can take it and go read it for themselves. Not even just saying, hey, go to the website, saying, hey, here's some information. I want to talk about this at the national or I want to talk about this at the state convention. I want to talk about it at the local association and um and to have those conversations across the desk from pastors have those conversations across the desk from associational leaders and we are going to be i think i think the plan is to have some more information uh that that is print ready or that people can buy uh to pass out and raise uh raise awareness um for what we're trying to accomplish i I wanted to speak back to that last question as well and say you know when we have associations adopt this resolution Uh, A lot of people, you know, the association is sort of one of the forgotten entities in the SBC, I think maybe in the north where I'm at, and it's maybe more so prominent in the south. But associations are very important in the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, That's the the closest, uh, that's the closest gathering of Southern Baptists to the local church. State conventions are important in the Southern Baptist Convention. When we have associations and state conventions adopt this resolution, what we're demonstrating is that this is not just a few Southern Baptists in Oklahoma that are fired up about this. It's not just a few Southern Baptists in Indiana that are fired up about this. It's Southern Baptists that are all over the country that want to see the Southern Baptist convention get behind this effort to abolish abortion. And so uh, to answer your question regarding literature, that is something we're working on. We don't have anything right now, uh, but, but it is going to be coming, I believe. Outstanding. And are you guys uh, also um, considering like working with like people that are already on the ground? So like I said, you have end abortion. Now you've got like uh, abolish abortion, Missouri. You've got, I'm sure there's tons of stuff like that. Have you reached out to any sort of, um, organizations that already exist that you can you know they're already on the street you know and then they they could be that provider of that localized i guess uh example and uh, something to join or is that something that you guys are interested in doing or we're, we're making common calls with, with groups like that okay we're also very aware keenly aware that whether we like it or not uh the sbc continues to be something of a provincial people mm-hmm. uh yeah, and and they're very suspicious of quote outsiders. Yeah, and so we will we will we will take uh, input and feedback from all groups and make common calls with abolitionists. Yeah, so we it's really de- yeah. So you're de- saying it's really SBC, important. Yeah, yeah, SBC imprimatur on it. Yeah, so, uh, so it's so really it's important good. that uh, we get this SB, SBC label. Um, yeah, for the SBC people, um, mm-hmm. it's sort of just that that calling card, like hey. Um, we're SBC people, we're interested in this, and then that is the bridge that would get you into, you know, well, exactly. hey, look, it's not just the SBC that's been doing this, other people. So it's kind of like catching those people that right. may be late to the party, <laughs> you know. I'll give you an example. Uh, yeah. Rusty Thomas with Operation Save America, they're going to host their national conference at, at our church facility in July. And he was he read over this. He got an early copy of the resolution. He was chomping at the bits, wanting to get it printed <laughs> and distributed. Uh, to promote the upcoming conference, and we and we said, you know, Rusty, 
we you're going to have this, but we it's it's got to come out from Southern Baptist first. So it doesn't look like the Southern Baptist that, that we just picked up Operation Save America's resolution. We were very uh, conscious and conscientiously aware of the of the order of things here. Yeah. So yeah. even though we are a year out from when this resolution will be presented. Uh, churches like the church that I pastor, First Baptist Buffalo in Buffalo, Missouri, Little Buffalo, Missouri, we're just, uh, to use the Southern Baptist language, we're a normal-sized church. Um, <laughs> is it good for us to um, maybe grab the resolution and put it on our church blog, distribute it to people in our church so they know what's going on? I mean, a lot of those folks won't even go to the, Missouri, the Southern Baptist annual meeting. Heck, They'll even do one less. They won't even watch it on the live stream, right? But we still want them to know, hey, your voice is being heard. Sign mm -hmm. this. And so do we have permission even, you know, on our uh, on our blog here at Tag Your It, can we copy the resolution and say, hey, we completely endorse this. We want you to sign Absolutely. it. Here's the link. Uh, and would that be another good way for pastors to get that yeah. out? Absolutely. And I would say your church should, should adopt it. Okay. The excellent. church can vote and just because this again, as we build this groundswell, x x hundreds or thousands of local churches have adopted this resolution. X amount of associations have adopted this resolution. State conventions met in November. I mean, look at the sequence here. Suppose local churches adopt this late summer, mid to late summer. Associations adopted at their annual meetings in October. State conventions adopted at their their annual meetings in november we move into the into the new year with uh, real momentum how about toward the spc yeah you know, how about um different christian institutions such as uh you know uh i'm not associated with either of these institutions so i'll use it i think uh, bill you're a graduate of southwestern baptist theological yes. seminary let's say that you sat on the board at southwestern baptist theological seminary do you bring it forward and say hey we want this to be a claim from the institution we affirm this idea is that another uh, avenue we can do it we have uh, we have a, a challenge at the institutional level uh, because the the heads of our institutions right now, I, I lovingly refer to them as the as the heads of the six families. Uh, they uh, they will tell you because I have documentation letters from them. Uh, we do not respond to resolutions. Gotcha. Uh, and so so I mean it's a great idea if you if you could find someone who's an affinity with us there, who someone on faculty, someone in the administration that says this is a great document. This is a guiding document for us to adopt. It'd be wonderful. Don't think we're there yet. Yeah. Remember, we're dealing with pragmatists. Gotcha. Yeah. And if, if yeah. the groundswell of Southern Baptist says, we want this and we want this now, uh, these guys will, will run up to get in front to lead. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so here is a question that I think a lot of people really struggle with. And um I don't always have the best answer to it, and it is uh, question number eight in our list, and um, Dusty said that he could talk on this one for like two hours, so I have <laughs> two of you, so we might be here all night. Um, <laughs> Here's a million dollar abortion debate question. Yeah, Why be concerned with abortion when Ro Roe vs. Wade has already been established as the law of the land? You want to go first, Darren? Yeah, sure. I'll go. I'll go first on that one. Um, I, there are a couple different things that I would point to in an answer to that question. Uh, first, the first thing I would say is that um, the, the Supreme Court is wrong sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and I think that we all should, we just uh, matter of fact, at the time that we're recording this podcast, the Supreme Court handed down a, a decision that I think just about every Christian would agree that they're wrong about. You know, and it, Gorsuch, uh, who was a conservative justice and uh, uh, chief justice, and now all of a sudden his name escapes me. Uh, the chief justice, who was a, Roberts. Uh, Roberts, yes, thank you. The chief justice Roberts, who was also appointed by a Republican, sided with the liberals, and Gorsuch was the one that wrote the opinion, saying that employers do not have the right to determine who they do and don't want to employ in their businesses in regards to LGBTQ. You know, we don't, as Christians, um, we don't take our moral 
uh, we, we don't take we don't take our moral uh, assumptions and presuppositions from the Supreme Court. Amen. Sometimes the Supreme Court gets it wrong. What would have happened if uh, in the 1800s, if the slavery abolitionist had been willing to surrender the cause of justice because of Dred Scott in 1857 or when the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the Fugitive Slave Act in 1859? Any person who would say that that uh, that abortion has been decided, the issue of abortion has been decided because of Roe versus Wade, and so we should just ignore it, I would ask them, well, do you think that the abortion abolitionists in the 1800s should have, should have done the same thing on slavery? And I think any thoughtful person would say no. The second thing I would say is, and then I'll, I'll let Pastor Bill speak to this, because I think Dusty is absolutely right. We could probably all talk about this for an hour, so I'll, I'll go out of my way to limit my remarks here. But the second thing I'll say about this is, you know, Christians really have got to start thinking more biblically yeah. in the way that we go about engaging with the governing authorities of our land. Mm -hmm. You know, when you read the Old Testament, I can't ever imagine seeing a prophet go to a magistrate and say thus saith the lord but just do whatever you can get you know mm. just get done Amen. whatever you can get done what, what you see the prophets do in the old testament is they go to the magistrates and they say this is what god has commanded period and if you don't abide by it judgment is going to come mm -hmm. and that needs to be the message of the church the magistrates of our day this is the shedding of innocent blood. We're murdering innocent people. It's defiling the land. It's going to bring the judgment of God. And what Christians need to do is we need to demand righteousness. We need to call for righteousness, right? Yes. And then we need to leave the results up to God, right? Our job is to call for righteousness. Results belong to God. And so the fact that the Supreme Court has ruled on this doesn't mean any more to me than than you know, whatever the next bad political idea is that comes out in the culture in which we live. Christians need Amen. to call for righteousness. Amen. So that, that would be my first answer. And I'm sure, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll let Brother Bill speak to it as well. The, uh, I look at it from, a, from the biblical standpoint and the legal standpoint. Uh, biblically, it's very clear. The Sixth Commandment says you shall not kill, which means we yeah. shall do all we can do to protect our own lives and the lives of others. So any law, uh, uh, I, was, I was studying in the arena of law before the Lord called me to the ministry. And uh, Blackstone's commentaries on the law have uh, been very fascinating to me. He was a, uh, he was a jurist in England. His, his commentaries on the law were standard reading in the United States up until the 20th century if you were going to go through law school in this country. And he makes the statement that he essentially is this, that any law, that does not comport with one or more of the Ten Commandments should not even be considered law. Mm -hmm. It's it's wrong to even consider it. And then you think about our, our own structure in this country, the Constitution. You know, we broke away from a king, King George, to be sure. But our king, Samuel Rutherford wrote a book entitled Lex Rex, The yes. Law is King. And the Constitution is, in a sense, our king. And the Supreme Court has operated outside of the Constitution. The Constitution yes. promises that everyone has the opportunity for life and liberty. The Constitution says no one should be deprived of life, liberty, property without due process of law. Mm -hmm. Every child slaughtered in the womb is denied due process. Yes. Uh, and so, so what we're saying, and it's, it's a two-pronged thing, the state of Oklahoma should say to the Supreme Court, and I love what Senator Joseph Silk one of my heroes at the state legislature in Oklahoma says, the Supreme Court can pound sand. We don't recognize its authority to tell us who we kill and who we don't kill in our state. We have that. We're, the law of lesser magistrates says we step in, we interpose in behalf of those who are being, who are being mistreated, poorly treated by other magistrates. We have that responsibility. And so... Roe v. Wade should be overturned. It never should have been adopted. It was adopted on the basis of a lie. Yeah. But if it's never overturned, and God being our helper, the state of Oklahoma, with the evangelicals in it, will see abortion abolished there. Amen. If the law runs up the pipe, comes to the appellate courts, and gets to the Supremes, and they exercise equal protection under the law, Roe v. Wade will fall. But if it never falls, we have a responsibility under God to be sure that the babies in Oklahoma are safe in the wounds of their mother. Yeah, and, you, and you're saying, like, you know, the church needs to rise up and do its job. So we need, exactly. the church needs to be the church 
that then addresses the civil magistrate saying, you are titled in Scripture the servant of God. That demands a standard exactly. that you must accept, I'm- and you must accept certain definitions. Um, you know, and, and, and we can recognize that they're recognizing certain definitions that are correct biblically um, only in places they want. But not in yeah. other places, and we need commend to them, them when they do right. Yes, commend right. them when they do yes. right, but but rebuke them when they do wrong. I and mean, I've told legislators yeah. this, and I've told people to feel free to tell them this. We're praying for you, and here's what we're praying: we're praying God will change your heart and your mind on this matter and bring you in line with Him, or He will change your location, Amen. your circumstances, move you out of the legislature by any means, move you off the planet if necessary. But we're praying that God will change you in this because you're right. standing in the way. I, I, if I could throw one other thing out there too, because I know I, um, you know, in regards to uh, what Pastor Bill just said as well, you know, as a matter of history, if you look back at the abolition of slavery, the abolition of slavery in the United States of America never would have happened if states had not defied tyranny. That's right. Uh, you know, if we look at, for example, the history of Wisconsin in relationship to Glover. Uh, a, a slave who, who, you know, and, and I would encourage people to check out the website of our friend uh, Matt Chirello, which uh, is uh, defytyrants.com. He's got a great section in there on how Wisconsin defied the, the tyranny of the Supreme Court to establish justice in relation to slavery. And it deals with the Fugitive Slave Act. And essentially what they said was they said that law is contrary to the Constitution. It's contrary to the law of God, and therefore it's null and void in the state of Wisconsin. And Wisconsin being willing to make that stand and other anti-slave states being willing to make that stand, that is the reason ultimately that slavery was abolished from our land. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to rally states as abolitionists. We're trying to rally states to rise up and say we're no longer going to make peace with a lawless Supreme Court decision and hope that the Supreme Court will reverse course. But if the Supreme Court does not reverse course, then the lower magistrate has a duty before God Amen. to establish justice, yeah. regardless of what the tyrant says, you know, in the, in the, in the black robe. Yeah, I think we've got to change the language of the debate. We need to take some things away from people. I reject yeah. this notion of settled law. Amen. Because bad law must never be settled law. Amen. Amen. Any, any bad law, and, and the, well, the Supreme Court does not write law. Yeah. The Congress there, does. Yeah. There's and, only and one. Need, yeah. There's only one law that's been established and is established uh, from eternity past. <laughs> and yes, exactly. We, and, exactly. and we, we rebelled against that, and we've got to go back. So the only way to be right. progressive is to go backwards. Um, yeah. You know, and they, they try to steal that and they say, well, then we're going to go back to these archaic. Di- no, 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 no. We're going back to the light that you want to avoid is, Amen. you know, and so we need to we need to be a lot more assertive than we have. But, I'm, I, you know, I think the, the main thing that I'm thinking here right now, you know, why is this so important? The SBC is the fact, um, you know, the, the SBC is a very multi-generational thing. You've got the young people. Um, we're a little bit more willing to reach out. It doesn't have to be labeled um, so much. Um, but you know, you, we still have, you know, have people that have grown up in the SBC, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like the, like 1960s Baptists, um, mm-hmm. SBCers, and they're very, uh, very on that label. So, um, just wanted to mention one thing, you know, why is it so important that we put the SBC label, why we, um, do this inside the convention is, you know, a lot of those people that are voting and the, a lot of the people that are pro-life are going to be in the older genera- generation, um, and then so they, they are going to want to seek that that label, I guess, the SBC. They're going to be a lot more skeptical. And they're, they're, because there is a philosophical difference between generations um, where we're a little bit more accepting of those outside things, you know, that we've established right. the SBC as like we're going to take care of each other. And that's why it hasn't reached out. So we need to reach out to them as the younger generation and level with them so that they can reach out with us and that we can join hands together. And so we can be that multi-generational um, family that we should be to then right. save the babies that are, should be in our family that we want in our family as well. So, you know, there's, there's just a lot going on here. It's so sensitive and what a better time to talk about justice whenever the world is screaming for it exactly. and trying and they're in and, and they're squandering and they're drowning because they really can't find a definition. 
you know, it's uh, something that we still have a little bit ahead of us, and that'll be, of course, in 2021, the Sanctity of Human Life Sunday. I'm assuming that you guys have been planning ahead, but that will certainly be a big push from my church. I can tell you on that Sanctity of Human Life Sunday in 2021, we will for sure be handing out this document, having our people register online and sign it, and uh, look forward very much to the way this is going to go. And by the way, if no one has told you, if you need to mark someone, Dave M. Beber in Buffalo, Missouri will take your resolution, and it will be submitted to the Missouri Baptist Convention's annual meeting. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And I might even lobby to maybe see if I can get up on the Green Counties. Um, stage and just talk about it for a bit so you know if there's anything that i can do to help um i'd like to because i'd like to see th this kind of stuff that because i haven't seen this kind of talk in in the uh in the county association so if there's anybody that's interested in this and um likes to go to their county or hasn't been but you know re recognizes the need to um let's uh make a county push an association yeah. will push to be able to just to take the stage for five minutes and just be like here i am here is what's happening. Um, here's what we have. Will you join me? And that's that's just a simple couple minutes that you can do at least to start the conversation in front of a wider audience than just say your church. Mm -hmm. so, and I, I believe Southern Baptist at, at every level want this. Amen. Like I, like I told you, we, we, we planned this over lunch mm. uh, at the Oklahoma yeah. Baptist Convention. We added we added one line, to, a couple of lines at the end of it, the calling on the legislature to enact legislation that would that would bring uh, the immediate end of abortion without exception to compromise, right? And I presented that at the convention. And well, the people, it was an uproar. I mean, folks stood, they shouted. Uh, people stopped me on the way out. Thank you for doing this. People I didn't know. Southern Baptists are ready for this. They're as yep. disillusioned as everybody else is that 47 years after Roe, we still have abortion on demand. Yep. And, you know, to add to what Pastor Bill said there, too, I agree with that. I think Southern Baptists are ready for this. When I made a motion from the floor of the National Convention, there was an uproar. Mm -hmm. um, people were in agreement. And, and, you know, we're in a moment right now where Southern Baptists are divided about a lot of things. But, you know, what's interesting is so, you know, there's the there's the. Um, there's, you know, obviously discussion happening in relationship to abuse. There's discussion happening in relationship to racial justice and so forth in the Southern Baptist Convention right now. And there's a lot of division around those topics. But you know what's interesting is that all of those people, the ones that, have, you know, have frustrations in relationship to racial disparity, you know, the ones that are focused on on abuse, which I say yes and amen. You know, we should we should deal with that issue, um, you know. There may be disagreements across the Southern Baptist Convention regarding these other things, and we need to continue to have those discussions. But those people all agree that abortion is wrong. Those people all agree that abortion is murder. They're all pro-life to some extent or another. And so now is a time more than ever where we need to be having this discussion. A lot of people would say now is a bad time to have this discussion because of these other things. I, I would push back against that, and I would say, no, 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 no. Now is a good time to have this discussion because like, like Brother Bill just said, pick any demographic in the Southern Baptist Convention that cares about any issue and ask them, do you think abortion ought to be illegal in your state? Do you think abortion ought to be legal in, in the United States of America? And I can just about guarantee you they're going to say, yes, it should be illegal. We should make it. They may not use the word abolish because they don't know what that means yet. But they say, if there's ability to make abortion illegal in your state tomorrow, would you agree with that? And I guarantee you, pick, pick them out of any demographic. You may find someone here or there that might disagree. But pick a rank and file Southern Baptist out of any one of those demographics on any one of those issues. And I can just about guarantee you they're going to agree. Yes, abortion should be illegal. So this is a unifying opportunity for the Southern Baptist Convention as well. Yes. Yeah. And I mean, we're talking about, and I mean, the, the thing is, you know, just, just in the context of where we are right now, um, just with the black lives matter, all lives matter, all this stuff that's going on, that's dividing us, um, how we could actually use the abortion thing and, and it's debate and talking to speak into everything because we're talking about the same universals, justice, life, and personhood. Mm -hmm. Right. 
they're they're all three there and you know i i know that a lot of people you know are getting mad because you know i'm going wait a second you're saying black lives matter but how about all black lives matter yeah. you know and stuff and then they're like oh now they're now they now you're trying to shoehorn in abortion in this and you're not being fair and it's like no 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 because it, what this is going to do what do you think a person is what is justice what is life you're going to have to ask those questions because if you say that black lives matter but not all black lives matter then if you can draw arbitrary lines why can't i draw yeah. like why can't society draw arbitrary lines by class by color by whatever um, you know, you can you can make a rescuing device all you want, but it's not going to get you anywhere. You're going to have to be silent in that sense. But you know, so this is a great time, like you said. You know, somebody might look at it and be and be hopeless. But for one, we believe in the gospel, which is the power of salvation for everyone who believes, right? And so then you can get into that discipleship question: like, do you really believe the gospel? Yeah. Are you going to trust in the gospel? Are you going to trust in Christ? And is this where you need help and unbelief? And so we can utilize this conversation for discipleship. We can utilize this conversation, like you said, to take back our words, to give our definition. Um, yeah. as and Christians if, and and if we believe like the Lord of life, who said he came to give life and give it abundantly, we cannot be a part to snuffing out life. Yeah. Amen. And are we going to believe when Paul says that we are more than conquerors? Are we? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be... Uh, consistent with the scripture are you, are you going to take what has been said about you as a child of god and be consistent with it and embrace it and love it and thank god for it or are you going to run in fear and so let's not run in fear let's let's charge ahead because you know I'm, i always go to uh, josiah whenever they found the lost book um you know mm -hmm. the covenant you know and it was read to him and he ripped his clothes and he went out and uh, and and dashed he abolished all the idols in the land all right and God yeah. said, "You, I, I, I commend you because you heard my word and you believed and you acted. And so yeah. we can't act incrementally. It's gotten so bad. The idol, the idols are everywhere. Yeah. And and it, so we've got to abolish. It's it's sort of a weird thing too, if you think about it, to think that we should act incrementally. Like if you weren't taught to think that way over the course of the last 40, however many years it's been, you know, we, we had a big emphasis. I might get myself in trouble with this, but I'm prone to doing that. So, <laughs> but, um, you know, last year, 2019 at the Southern Baptist convention, we had a big emphasis on abuse. And I, I, like I said earlier, I agree, you know, we need to, we need to abolish abuse from the Southern Baptist convention. Okay. Yeah. Um, I agree. But you know, what's interesting is that over the course of that entire convention, with all of the emphasis and discussion on abuse, there was not one single person at one single point in the convention that ever stood up and said, hey, you know, I agree, abuse is bad, abuse is wrong, but this is a big issue, this abuse thing. And so, you know, we really should not expect to be able to deal with this abuse issue all in one fell swoop. You know, yeah. we need to deal with abuse incrementally, you know, little bit by little bit. Nobody said that. The, 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 the general consensus the consensus of the convention was pretty clear abuse is bad we need to take steps to deal with it everybody not might not agree with what those steps should or shouldn't be but the consensus of the convention was clear abuse is bad and we need to take steps to deal with it so that it doesn't happen anymore ever 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 again and if it does happen it never is covered up ever 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 again there was no there was no, we need to deal with this incrementally. There was no, we need to take baby steps to address this problem. It was, we need to address this problem right now, period. No exceptions, no compromises, no ifs, ands, or buts. So what we're saying is, so why don't we do that with abortion? Hmm. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we do the same thing with abortion that we did with abuse? Because aborted babies are having their arms and legs ripped off. It is the most accepted form of abuse that exists in our society. And the reason I say it's a weird thought process is because we don't really think this way about other forms of injustice. Nobody's right. saying we should deal with slavery or we should deal with racial injustice incrementally. You know, we, we don't think this way about other injustices. We only think this way about abortion because we've been discipled to think this way over the course of the last 40 years. And it's not a biblical way of thinking. So I wholeheartedly agree with Bill when he says we need to take back the language and we need to push Christians to think more biblically on this issue. Yeah. yeah. You know, I would be tarred and feathered if I suggested that a goal that we ought to set for ourselves is to only see 
four or five black men killed by police next year. That should yeah. be the goal for the next year. Is let's cut the number in half. Yeah, no, I'd be to, lynched. Yeah, we want to see no. We would love to see right. no police see, police exactly. brutality. We would love to see no black men killed. You know, one um, yeah. one incident is too many. We've got to help our people. We've yeah. got to disciple our people to start thinking that way. In Oklahoma, we've seen a strange phenomenon. Abortions are on the rise in Oklahoma. We've had yep. a 10% increase in abortions in the last two years. I'm waiting for the numbers to come out in June, later June, to see if the trend continues to prove to our legislators every bill you've passed has been has been spitting in the wind. The abortions yep. are climbing. You have not stopped abortion. You haven't even limited abortion. You haven't cut back on abortion. It continues to climb. Mm-hmm. Yep. Same thing in Indiana, actually. Interestingly, the places where the abortion numbers are falling the most are the places that are not passing incremental pro-life laws. They're actually pro-abortion states where abortion is falling the most, which flies in the face of the whole incremental argument uh, from the pro-life community. Uh, Abortions are rising in Indiana. They're rising in Oklahoma. I'm pretty sure they're rising in Texas. They're rising in Ohio. They're rising in the states where we're passing these incremental legislation, which so if you want to look at abortion numbers and say we're winning the fight, abortion numbers are, are, are lowering. Well, why are they lowering more in New York than they are in Oklahoma in terms of percentage? You know, it's, gotta, almost, it's almost like God is rubbing our faces in the dunghill of the pro-life legislation. It's been yeah. yeah. And I mean, when yeah. you look at New York, you know, um, yeah, that you might see you can look at the particular so far so much that you're not you're not recognizing the outside stuff that saw that yeah they might have lower abortions but what other sin has taken the place that's even yeah, worse you know and so it's 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 not again we have to be faithful to the text amen. we have to be faithful to what we've been called to do and we're not seeking results we're seeking amen. to be faithful amen. and do that's what right. we're asked to do and because and then yeah. and then that's what that's consistent with what we're saying if we're faithful God will be faithful. And, and and that's the thing, and so it, yeah, we're just so results driven. Everybody just looking at the results. It's even it's just that you know, just in the conversation of why we do the apologetics the way we do, we are faithful. We're not Amen. about the result. We're faithful. That's, that's right. all we can be called to do. We're we're not looking for Christ to be like great results, guys. Yeah, we're saying mm-hmm. he's going to say, "Welcome, my good and faithful servant." After he's the one that brought around <laughs> the results. And so, you know, yeah. so it all comes down to having the same hermeneutic through everything that you do, having that same thing in all areas of life. And so, you know, like, you know, that's, and that's how we can speak on abortion at the same time we have a pandemic, at the same time that we have, um, you know, racial unrest um, everywhere going on um, is because it all will speak into each, like all the, all the same universals will speak into every particular and make sense. Amen. Well, guys, we just want to thank, thank you, you so much. And just to let you know, Adam and I have copied and pasted the resolution into a Google Doc. We just saw that the Missouri Baptist Convention has opened up as of, like, I believe today to accept resolutions. And we will be submitting our resolution before I head back to Buffalo, Missouri tonight. So we want to appreciate you guys. want to let you know how much we appreciate you. Uh, if you need any platform in the state of Missouri, we are more than happy to touch base with you. I've actually contacted the one of the general editors for the Missouri Baptist Pathway and encouraged them to do an article on you all. Uh, we just want to do whatever we can to make sure that this happens. Uh, we want to be movers and uh, we want to be uh, along your side. Not that we're real important guys or anything like that, but man, we just want to put people from the church, uh, lay people uh, to work in uh, in protecting the lives of the unborn. So thank you again so much. We appreciate so much. your efforts. We well, appreciate you your much. efforts. We appreciate making common calls with you, and, and we're counting on your voice. We thank God for the voice he's given you, and we will be laboring together. This will not be the last you've heard from us, and I'm sure it won't be the last we've heard from you. We'll be linking arms, and prayerfully God will hear the joint cries of his people and Amen. will Amen. heal the land of this Holocaust. Yeah, Amen. yeah. 
Well, dude, thank you guys, yeah, for coming on. And uh, yeah, if you if you have any uh, other issues that come up, anything, any more topics to talk about, uh, especially that you want to get out in a podcast like this uh, form, just let us know. Um, we will like we will zoom it right on to the next Monday, even if we have to do five shows uh, because you wanted to tack something on. We'll do it. So just let us know uh, from your end. You know, like we want to extend that. You can force yourself on us. Hey, we want to talk about this. We want to talk about this on tag, and we'd That's be right. more than more than willing to have you guys on to talk about anything. So, amen. So, Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. You. God yeah. bless your efforts. God bless you, you guys, and keep serving your King. So, amen. Thanks, brothers. Amen. Appreciate you guys having us on. Our pleasure. All right, All right, guys. Well, you know that that was a very fun, informative, um, heavy talk about about certain things. You know, um, if you guys uh, want to go back in our backlog, again, we've had Jeff Durbin, we've had Kavan Myers, um, we've had uh, Will Scroggins, uh, Josh Jenkins. So we've we've talked yeah. about this issue a lot uh, surrounding the multifaceted nature of the debate, and you know, in real time, in real life as well, just not just out here suspended. Um, but if you are in the SBC. Um, if you are in a county association, if you are in a state association, if you haven't even gotten into it, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, the past few years I've been involved in the county a little bit um, by showing up, putting a tag table up, and talking to people. Um, it's going to die. It's going to die if us 30-somethings and younger don't show up. That's right. So if you want to keep something like that alive, you know, again, like, you know, I could be getting mad at it. These things are things we've created, so they can go by the wayside if it's not a bad thing. But we have them, yes, and they are useful, yes. And so, get involved in your association. Like here in Green County, you got a guy like Michael Haynes, awesome dude that Great lets guy. us in. Like I, I've had to seek him for counsel on certain issues. I call the dude. He goes, I will make time for you, and he's made time for me. So there, there there's things out there. Um, these associations are important, so please, um, in August, if they, if they have the Green County, if you guys are in Green County, show up. Show the older generation you care. They, they look around, and they see themselves, and they see there's no young ones here, and they think that, you know, it is one of those things like, do the kids hate us? Do the hate, kids hate these certain things? Do we need to change? Are we going to die? Just think about what they're thinking. That's and right. So get involved in your green county or to your county association. Talk about the state association. Bring stuff. this to your yeah. church if you're on a. Yeah. If you are just the single pastor in a, uh, you know, a single pastor church with deacons, bring it to your deacon board. Put it forward. We are voting. This is this is a resolution that we affirm. Yeah. Um, it is going to be something that will make its way into the deacons meeting that I go to next, and just yeah. say, hey, we are for abolishing abortion. These folks are yeah. going to make a stand that make it illegal. Um, I hope it doesn't create controversy in my church, but uh, the reality is that we should be opposed to Let anyone who is killing Let the gospel be the offense. Others. Let That's the right. gospel and count the cost and know that you're going to lose people. Um, but if it's a gospel issue, you know that you are doing something in praise to God, and God is happy with it, and there's treasure in heaven waiting for you. Um, even though you might lose something here on earth, it's fine. Um, but like I said, uh, get a hold of this. You know, Missouri Baptist Convention is really cool because they have an apologetics network, so they're they're reaching out to people. Um, so we we've we've got to utilize these things. We can utilize these things. There's you know there is stuff there. There's resources there um, to ha be had. And so like you know just one final thing with the with with getting into that sort of resolution life, associational life, convention life. Um, again, we got to bridge the gap. We got to do this. They set up programs. The older generation is good at setting up programs. That's right. But there's not a whole lot of feet. Why haven't you seen feet? Well, what what are you not doing? They can't anymore. They've they've grown up. They've done their thing. They they are still doing their thing, but they have to do things in a different way. And they need the young people to come up with feet and muscle and hands. And that's what the younger generation. So we haven't been a good multi generational convention. Um, so let's let's change that. We've got to change ourselves. We've got to work on our ethos. So utilize this as something to get in there, um, make connections, build relationships, disciple one another, exhort into one another, rebuke one another, and uh, you know be an agent of change so that we can see um, you know the the illegal. At least it's made illegal whenever sinners go out and murder. That's right. And it's and then it's across the board. It's consistent and it glorifies God if we are consistent in our justice. 
I so think that's you all I can say. Really well. I'm a little passionate. Looking forward, <laughs> looking forward to, to being at the booth with you this year, yeah. handing out this literature. Yeah. And uh, I think we can even go to Mike and say, hey, we want to. We want to yeah. move to do this. Yeah, Mike will answer thing. his phone, and he will meet with us, <laughs> and and he'll do that. Very and helpful. Expect, and it's, yeah. That's great. So, but anyway, with that said, we'll just uh, we'll make that the end of this uh, Tag Your Podcast. So, with the Tag Your Podcast, I'm Ray Ray, and I am Dave, and solely Deo. Deo.